Hey, hey, how's it going out there? It's me, Lance Cardinal, once again, joining you guys, the grade fives and sixes up there at OPK. So excited to be here again to do another fun art project. And as always, it's my favorite time of the day. And you know what? It's almost Halloween. So it's such an exciting time right now. It's the end of the month. Everyone's getting ready to go trick or treating. It's gonna be so much fun. I'm sure you and your friends have some great Halloween ideas planned. And it's always so cool to be here with you guys. And of course, we start our whole day, as always, with saying hello to each other. And how do we say hello in Cree? That's right, Tamse. That's how we say hello. So let's do it together because it's so fun to talk in Cree. Let's just do it together. Are you ready? One, two, three, Tamse. Awesome job, you guys. Amazing. Keep practicing those Cree words. Make sure and listen to your moms and dads and elders when they're giving you teachings and talking about things. Those things are so, so important to keep in our mind and in our heart and to define who we are as indigenous people. So, so cool. And speaking of cool, one of my favorite parts about Halloween, besides dressing up and watching scary movies, of course, is carving pumpkins. It's so much fun. So let's go to my pumpkin carving station. We're gonna transform this space right now into a pumpkin carving space. Are you ready? Here we go, on the count of three. One, two, three. Hey, look at that. Now we are in pumpkin carving mode. That's right, OPK. It's time to carve a pumpkin. And what an exciting part of Halloween, of course, that is making a pumpkin and uh, carving it with the family or your friends or whoever you love and care about. Here is my completed pumpkin. Ready? I already carved one. Check it out. Ooh, so, so cool. So we're gonna leave that pumpkin right there. Just as a decoration is so to see what we're doing. And this is the pumpkin I'm gonna be carving right now. Of course, as we always know, we get all our supplies together. So I got everything I need. I got my pumpkin, uh, which you can get at your local grocery store, or even if you're lucky enough to go to a pumpkin patch, that's even better. So head down to your pumpkin patch, grab your favorite pumpkin, and you are good to go. Now you're also gonna need a few more things, like a big spoon like this to scoop out all the guts inside. I, of course, have this specialized Halloween scooping spoon, but you can get uh, a regular spoon as well. Now you can buy these at like the dollar store or grocery stores just as well. You can also buy there these little kind of cutting tools. Um, they are very easy to use, much safer than a knife. They're not sharp, they're, they're sort of um, uh, soft on the top and they're good for like sawing small details. Now, of course you can still use a knife, but if you are younger, please ask someone bigger to help you at that point to cut stuff out. You can do all the fun stuff like scooping up the guts and drawing the face on, and your mom or dad or someone you love and care about can do all of those dangerous things, okay? So that's what they're gonna do for you. Now you're also gonna need a marker of some kind or something to draw on the outside to create your face. And of course, a light. Now you could use a candle on the inside for your Halloween, but I have these really cool, uh, bottom at the dollar store, but like little glow lights that go inside the thing and it'll make a nice colorful glow. All right, so you're also gonna need a bucket of some kind, just like this, to put all your guts into to keep things uh, clean. You're also gonna need some paper towel because your hands are gonna get messy and you know they are, so having paper towel nearby is also very helpful. All right, so let's begin the fun. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut the top off of our pumpkin. So exciting. Now, when you're cutting the top off a pumpkin, be sure you're cutting it at an angle, not straight up and down. If you cut straight up and down, you're gonna have to, um, your, your lid might slide in and fall as it gets a little bit older when it's outside or on, on your uh, windowsill. So cut at an angle like this so it stays on top uh, much better. So here we go. Now, like I said, you can use a knife or you can use these tools as well. These tools are a little bit easier to use because they are like a little mini saw, okay? So we're gonna saw that top off real quick here. I love the smell of carving a pumpkin. I love the smell of the inside, the smell of uh, all the pumpkin guts, and I even love the smell of uh, baking some of the pumpkins inside when you're done. We'll talk about that in a minute. All right, so here we go. We've cut the top. So here we go. You can see I've made a circle on the, on the outside. So now we're gonna pull the top off. Here we go. You see all the pumpkin guts inside. 
Oh, look at that. Ew, pumpkin guts and brains all inside there. So awesome. <laughs> Arr, pumpkin guts, so cool. So we're gonna take some of these guts and you know what, the best thing about this stuff, some of this stuff on the inside, when you have pumpkin pie, that's what this stuff hanging down is made of. It's from the pumpkin, inside the pumpkin. And you can also, with these seeds here, separate the seeds from the, um, the pumpkin guts and you'll be able to put them on a baking sheet with some salt and then bake them in the oven for a little while and be able to eat them and there's little seeds inside, so delicious. Something that you and your mom and dad or cook them or whoever you have in your family can totally do and try. All right, so let's get all these guts off the top here. And take our knife, our scooper, and we'll scoop off um, the guts from the lid. There we go. I love this spoon. It is so scrapey, and that's the best part. Look at that, all done. We'll put our top right over here. Now, let's roll up our sleeves and pull out some of these pumpkin guts with our hands. So it's fun. Here we go. All right, you ready? Here we go. Oh, gross! Ew! <laughs> now this is the fun part. So ask mom and dad if you can be the one to pull the guts out of the pumpkin. Oh, look at that. Ew! Black. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm gonna use a spoon. It's a little bit too messy for me. Take some of our paper towel, wipe off our hands. <sighs> Throw that in the garbage. And let's scrape it out with our spoon. All right, where's my spoon? <laughs> ah, here it is. Okay, so I love to scrape from the top of the pumpkin I'll go all the way around. Now, like I said before, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just gonna be enough to scrape all the things off so that when you put a candle inside, there's nothing to burn. Plus, it looks better when it's lit and there's not a bunch of seeds and stuff inside. So we're scraping off the inside here. Now this might be a job for a mom or a dad or a brother or a sister or a cookum or an uncle or someone older who has stronger arms. And like I always say, don't be afraid to ask for help. That's what they're there for. Our family are always ready to help whenever we need it. Oh, look at that. Some of the guts coming out. Ew. Perfect. I'm just about done the inside and then we get to the fun part, which is making our character. Okay, so, putting all that guts in there. Now once again, if you want to save it, make sure and put the guts into a nice bowl, not to a garbage can. We don't want it to get uh, dirty, so put all the guts if you want into a baking sheet or, or into a nice bowl, and then later on when you're done carving your pumpkin, you can go back and you can bake your seeds or make pumpkin pie. All right, so we're gonna put that away for now. We're all done. A spoon as well. All right, now it's time to create our pumpkin face. So we have all these seeds everywhere. So funny. Okay, so now let's keep going. So we have our lid on top, which fits perfectly. It's just like a little puzzle. Let me decide where are we gonna put our pumpkin face. You know what? I like this side. So that's the side I'm gonna use right there to create our pumpkin face. Okay, now. We're gonna do a very simple face. This one here is more of a triangle pumpkin. I'm gonna do circles for this one, okay? More of a circle eyes, circle pumpkin, okay? So here we go. If you look on my table, I have so many different pumpkins to look at and choose from. This is sort of my inspiration. Starting with the eyes. All right. One big eye here. And another eye over here. But don't forget, that's not to be perfect. It's just a jack-o'-lantern, and we're gonna do a triangle nose like this. And then maybe a little pumpkin with fangs, like a vampire. But he's still a happy pumpkin. A big smile on his face. So there we go. There's my pumpkin face that I've decided to, to uh, put on my pumpkin. So there it is, looks super, super cool. Now, once we're done that, we can start cutting it out. Now we're gonna take these tools again because they're so great. But like I said before, you can also use a knife if you're, if you're um, old enough, okay? So we go inside and start cutting. And I like to try to cut outside the black lines just so we don't have to clean it off later and you don't see it later on. But again, it doesn't really matter if you have black lines. It's totally fine. So 
So I hope everyone is all ready for Halloween, all your costumes and everything. Oh, there we go. One eye out, pumpkin eye. <gasps> so cool, put that in the garbage can there. And there we have one eye, how exciting. We'll put our lid off to the side for now. All right, now it's time for our second eye. Start cutting that one out too. Oh. This is such a fun project to do at home with your family near Halloween. Put on some fun Halloween music, maybe even some Halloween cartoons, and get everyone together in the living room and say, let's do a family pumpkin. And if you really want to be brave, you can pick a design that you like from a comic book or maybe online. You can go check out some pictures and print them out. It doesn't have to be anything special. You can make it up as you go along. The best and most important part is just to have fun. And this is the best. I absolutely love Halloween. And I even love carving pumpkins even more. Nose is done. Oh, <laughs> he got a nose job. <laughs> and there it went. So there we now have our eyes and our, our, our nose all done. Perfect. Time to get some of little squigglies off the back. There we go. Now it's time for the smile. And like I said before, I have a bit of a vampire mouth. So I'm going to cut that vampire mouth out with bangs. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> a little difficult with this thing sometimes. Here we go. I'm going down to the smiley part. It's hard on this side. I'm getting so messy and I love it. <laughs> Getting messy when you do pumpkins is the best part. So be sure you're wearing clothes. You don't mind getting messy. All right, now time to make the fangs for my vampire, vampire pumpkin. Two fangs, center, and the other fang. Now this vampire pumpkin, he is a vampire, but he only eats pumpkin seeds. He does not like to eat people, just pumpkin seeds. So he'll be happy to have some pumpkin seeds after we're done. Okay, I think we're all done the mouth. I'll cut out. Let's pop it out and see how it looks. Oh, yes! <laughs> that is so awesome. Put that down there. Look, it looks pretty good, I think. So we can cut some of those little parts off with our knife to make it look better. Just like that. I think that looks pretty good. And there we have it. Our pumpkin is all done. Oh my goodness, it looks so great. Now, let's put the light in and see how it looks, okay? The first thing we're gonna do is turn it around so you can't see yet. We'll put the light inside. All right, here we go. Whoa, it's so cool. Are you guys ready to see it? Here we go. One, two, three. There it is. Our amazing, cool pumpkin. Oh my goodness, and it's flashing so cool. This is the kind of thing that you can have at your house outside on your steps in the winter time. Uh, I mean, during Halloween time, and even if it gets really cold, it'll just stay frozen. Or you can put it in your window, what, whatever you want to do. Whatever you decide is going to be the best thing for you to do. All right, so hope your pumpkins look as good as mine. I'm sure they will. But be sure, get your family together, spend some time doing pumpkins. But now, let's get back to our art project and our Cree word of the day. Here we go. Woo, and we're back again, grade fives and sixes. What did you think of that? I love carving pumpkins and I hope you liked my pumpkin carving and I can't wait to come to Wabaska on Halloween and see your pumpkins sitting outside or in your windows. You gotta make as many as you can, put them outside there, put a candle in them and have an amazing, amazing Halloween. So exciting. And now it's time for our Cree word of the day. And today's Cree word is Halloween. And we say Halloween in Cree, Wiatsikyu Kisigao. That's right, Wiatsikyu Kisigao. And that actually means tricking day. 
So it's kind of like Halloween because we go trick or treating and we play tricks on our friends and we hide and we scare them. But uh, like I always say, be safe out there at Halloween, you guys. Stay off the roads, don't walk around. Make sure and do everything you can to stay safe. Bring flashlights, reflective gear, all that kind of stuff. So, so important. So, now that we've talked about that, now that we've carved a pumpkin, now that we know our pre word of the day is Halloween, that brings us to our craft of the day, which is so exciting. Check it out. Ooh, isn't that the coolest? This is a mason jar jack-o'-lantern. So cool. It's made of glass and hodgepodge some, some tissue paper on the top of it. A little bit of, uh, you know, vines there. But this is such a cool thing. You can put it in your room, put a little LED light in there or a real candle because it's safe for candles. And you can turn off all the lights and have a really cool pumpkin. Or if you really want to, you can make a little handle for it like this and you can carry it around outside when you're trick-or-treating. Kind of a cool little lantern. <laughs> Let's get that all curled up again. So we're gonna put this little cool lantern right here and that's today's fun project. I'm sure you have all the supplies together, but let's make sure you have everything you need right now for supplies. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna need obviously is a mason jar. Now you can use whatever kind of jar you want. Um, there's the, the canning jars, there's old peanut butter jars, whatever you have, but it has to be glass and it has to be able to take the lid off and be open on the top, okay? This is very important. So this is a, a medium sized one, but you can make them as big as you want. Uh, as long as a little uh, candle can fit inside, it'll be perfect. Next, we're gonna need some tissue paper. We're gonna need orange tissue paper and black tissue paper. We're also gonna need some pipe cleaners. So we have some green pipe cleaners right here. We're gonna need some white glue. Now this is a very dr uh, fast drying white glue. So I'm gonna have to probably add some water to it. That's not a big deal, it's, it's easy to do. Uh, what else are we gonna need? Oh, some scissors, just like this to cut some squares. We're gonna need a paintbrush like this or a sponge brush to use to glue and to spread glue on our project just like that, okay? So make sure the brushes are disposable brushes or ones you don't care about that much. But remember, after we're finished, you must rinse the brush immediately after the project is done or it will be ruined forever. So be sure to remember that. And I think that's everything we need for right now. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Oh, we also need something for the glue to go into. I'm gonna use this container on the top of my jar so they don't need it after we're done as the place to put my glue, okay? I'm gonna put that right there, get it ready to be used. All right, let's begin! It's gonna be so much fun, I'm so excited for this one. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is roll up our sleeves, because it gets a little bit messy for the first part of this project, which is getting all gluey. Oh wait, first we gotta cut some squares. So we're gonna get our orange paper. We wanna cut our tissue, and this is, should be tissue paper. Uh, it's the best thing you could use, and this is the stuff you get at the dollar store where you can, uh, you know, you can use it to make gift bags, things like that. But I like it because you can cut it in bulk. So, you know me, I always have to cut things, fold and cut once instead of a million times. We're gonna do the same thing here. So we take some of our tissue paper, and we cut just a small slit off the side. You can see here, I've already done that once. Just like this, and cut it like that and we have ourselves a little strip. We take those, you wanna cut them about that big, about an inch wide. Let's cut another strip, just to be safe. We wanna have a lot of squares, because once we start working, we're not gonna have time to cut more squares. So you wanna have way more squares than you think you're gonna need, okay? So there we go. Let's cut those up. Now we break them up into littler pieces because like I said before, you wanna make sure that everything is ready to go. You don't wanna be doing this later on when the glue is on the jar. So split them up. You think you have too many? Ask if anyone in the classroom needs some squares to share because you know, you don't wanna be greedy. You wanna be able to share with your classmates if it's allowed. <laughs> Maybe just keep your own squares. Um, so here we have a nice pile of one inch tissue squares, just like that, easy as pie. Put that aside. Now we're gonna work on our glue. So like I said before, we're gonna need quite a bit of glue. Um, and this stuff is a fast drying glue, so I'm gonna have to add water. So we squeeze in a whole bunch of glue. I'm gonna take the lid right off this one and do it like that. So. There we go. 
about that much glue probably will work. And like I said, I might run out, so I'm gonna have to add some more, but that's okay. It's better to have too uh, little than too much. We don't wanna waste. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of water, just so I can make it a little bit more brushable with my uh, paintbrush. Because sometimes when it's this kind of glue, it's thick and the brush won't work very well. So I added some water to my glue. I'm gonna take some time before I begin to mix the water into the glue. So it's a bit more like paint. We don't want it to be glue. We want it to be a gluey, watery paint. Just like that. Now, you don't have to add the water, but let me tell you right now, it gets really messy if you don't, and the tissue paper starts to fold on itself. It's not a good scene. So it's really a good idea to try to put some water in there to begin with. All right, so that glue looks like it's ready to go. It's kind of watery, kind of perfect. Perfect, set that aside for now. Oh, a little bit of glue on the table. I'll rub that off on some paper. All right, the glue is ready to go. Let's put that right there. Next thing we're gonna do is smear that glue all over the jar. Now, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna put some paper down on my table because I wanna make sure the area stays clean. And I recommend you do the same thing. Put some paper down on the table, newspaper, uh, old uh, recycling bin paper, anything on the table to protect your desk, okay? So this is gonna get messy. We take our jar, just like this, we put our hand inside of it, not a big deal, and we start to paint the entire jar. Now don't do the bottom, just the sides. Now don't be afraid to put a lot on, smear it right on, have fun, smoosh it on, because this has to be solid for the tissue paper to stick. There we go, let's see, I've covered almost my entire jar with glue, and now, I'm gonna start putting the squares on. So all we do is take our squares, put some here, and we add it onto the jar one by one. Now, it doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter where, don't overlap them too much, because what we wanna do is have the light come through, right? So it's best to keep the pieces not too far, uh, not too close together. And don't, I try to only do one at a time, okay? Don't put on two or three at a time. I know it can be, you can get impatient, but the best thing to do is work slowly and thoughtfully, all right? And your project will turn out brilliant. Especially now that you're older kids, you know, it's time to start really focusing on everything that we do all the time to make sure we're trying our best, we're setting a good example for the younger kids, and also we're learning to be a better young adult, right? It's kind of important. Like I said before, add some pieces on just like that. I like to do a little bit of gluing as I go to sort of flatten everything down. Now remember, don't fold any of them over. Try to glue them so that they lie as flat as possible. And not too much glue is needed, just enough to get it wet and to get it flat, okay? And then keep going. Now this is such a great project to do at home with your family because everyone has jars around and tissue paper is so easy to find. You can get it at the dollar store or wherever. <laughs> if you're gonna get glue all over your fingers, you're gonna get them stuck on just like that. Try your best to get it off your hand and continue to work. You gotta work quite fast, I'm not gonna lie. Don't slow down, don't stop, that glue will dry. Wanna get it all on there, one at a time. Now look, I'm not overlapping too much because light has to come through and show that beautiful color. It's like our jar right there. All right. Let's see, it looks like I have a few on there. I'm gonna add some glue. Just to flatten it down. A little bit on the bottom there, but that's okay. I might add a row on the bottom to fill in those spaces there. And that's not a big deal at all. That can happen near the end. So also be careful, watch which direction you're painting those pieces of square. If you paint the wrong way, it might do that and bunch it up. You don't want that, you want it to be flat, okay? I'm trying to push it now towards the bottom. It's hard when you can't see from this perspective what's going on. But like I said, you know, be thoughtful. 
but also, you know, be creative. Don't worry too much about it. Sometimes you gotta let yourself go with art and not overthink because, you know, it's the only time of day you get to do something with your creative mind. And that is something very different than math mind or gym, gymnast, uh, gym time mind or, you know, any other kind of day. So this is really important. We, we really enjoy using our creative minds. So I'm just gonna flatten those ones down. Looking pretty good. Oh, I can see <laughs> I was touching the table with the jar and some of the stuff came off. Careful not to do that. But I'm only putting it down so I can show you through the camera what I'm doing. But normally you can just hold it up like this. If you're in the classroom, you could just, you know, have it like this and work on it till you feel comfortable. I'm gonna add a few more squares in the top here, or the bottom, I guess, to hide those little indiscrepancies that I had there. All right, looks pretty good. I love this, it looks so cool already. Even just the orange on it alone it kind of looks like flesh or like something cool like that. I love it. Looks awesome. Amazing. All right. There we go. It looks pretty much done. And the way you can tell is if you look from the inside of the jar, you'll be able to see the light coming in. You can see where there might be spaces or holes. And I see right there, I might need another square. So take a square, add it on, put some glue. Look inside again. Ah, yes, no clear spaces, all covered with orange. Perfect, ready to move on to the next step. All right, put this aside for now. And all our orange squares can be moved over for now. Okay, the next step we're gonna do is to cut our face out of black tissue paper for our jack-o'-lantern. Now, I have a couple options here. I'm gonna move this over. It has glue on it, I don't wanna get glue on my tissue paper. With our black tissue paper, you don't need much of it. A very small square. Cut it out. You have a couple options here. You can use a pencil crayon if you want to draw. And I have one right here I'm gonna grab. If you have a white pencil crayon, you can, uh, crayon, you can draw your pumpkin face on your paper first. Now remember, it's not very big. You don't need much of a face. You can see here, it's small. So, do the same thing again, okay? We're gonna draw eyes. Two tri a triangle nose. And this one, we're gonna do sort of like a goofy mouth. Wavy. There we go, and there's my little pumpkin face. Love it. So we cut it out with our scissors. Now again, we want to work as quickly as possible because we want to use the glue that's already wet on the jar to add these faces on, okay? Super important, so be as quick as you can making this face and cutting it out. And also, if you don't want to do this, you want to just keep it as a pumpkin and do something else, do something else. Make a bat, make a spider. Make something that'll show up really well on that jar. Like I always say, it doesn't have to be how I do it. You use your own creativity and your own ideas to make yours uniquely you, okay? Super important. All right, I have two, one eye here, and now the second eye. Perfect, I have all my pieces. Where did it go? Put that to the side. Let's bring our jar back into the picture here. Oh, I almost lost my face. Like I said before, try and keep everything on the paper to keep your space clean, okay? It's super important. All right, now choose the side you wanna have as the front. I'm gonna use that as the front right there. Let's start with our mouth. Here we go, and put that right on there. Easy as pie. Now our nose. Keep in mind, this is hard. If it, if it gets stuck to your finger, it might get stuck and you might have to do another square or another triangle, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Don't sweat it too much. Triangle nose, so cool. And two triangle eyes. One. And two. Perfect! Oh my goodness. Oh, 
I love it. Oh, <laughs> some pieces falling off the bottom. You gotta re glue some of that on. That's why I said try not to put anything on the bottom because it just ends up being a big old mess. Um, but now we take some glue and we add it to the, on top of those that face we just did, okay? Now don't worry about it looking white right now and sort of creamy. That will clear, uh, dry clear, just like that one there. You don't see any colors on it or any glue. It dries very clear. There we go. And the face is now on. So we're gonna let that sit and dry for the rest of the day. I'm gonna add one more piece down here because um, I pulled some off by accident. <laughs> Accidents happen, okay, even to me. There we go, so that is all good, perfect. Set aside our glue, we're all done with that. Now make sure you rinse that brush right away. Teachers, I do recommend at this point you pause the video and everyone goes to rinse their brushes with their glue. Unless they're throwing them away, then don't worry about it. But if they are rinsing them, gather the brushes for them now or let them go clean the brushes. It's really, really important. You don't wanna ruin those brushes. But if you don't have to, let's keep going. Next up we're gonna do is our vines. Such a fun part. So all we do is take one of these pipe cleaners, put it on the top, and we twist it like this. Right there. I love that. Perfect. I kind of want mine on the side a little bit, right? So it's kind of that way. And we take our next piece of pipe cleaner. I'm sure I hope you can see it in the camera. And we're gonna put it around the front like this and twist it around. Just kind of twist them all together so they become one sort of vine. Love it. So there we have two pieces sticking up like that. Now we want to make them curly like a pumpkin. This is fun. You wrap it around your finger. Simple as that. Watch this. Wrap, wrap, wrap. One. And this one. Wrap, wrap, wrap. Two. So there we go. We have two vines, curly little vines on the side of our pumpkin. So, so cool, super cute. And that is it. All finished. Now that was not very hard at all, was it? And something so cool like this, you can give away as a present on Halloween as well. Maybe give it to your mom or dad or someone you care about as a gift. And you know, if you want to take it home, like I said, take it home like this, put it, uh, a little tea light in it and put it on your window for Halloween. So cool. So now I have two amazing pumpkin jar lanterns and I'm sure yours is awesome too. So congratulations, you did it. We had lots of fun today as always. It was so much fun to hang with you and I can't wait to do it again next week. But until then, may the creator watch over you guys as long as the sun shines, the grass grows and the river flows. See you later guys.